Next exercise we are going to perform is the barbell close grip incline bench press. For this exercise, the subject should lie on a bench with bar above the chest. Grasp the bar from rack with the shoulder width or slightly narrower grip. Disengage the bar by rotating the bar back. Lower the weight to the chest with elbows close to the body. Push the barbell up until arms are straight. Until the arms are straight. So push the barbell up until arms are straight. Then lower the barbell again towards the chest and repeat. In this session, we will be discussing about the different muscles of the chest and the exercises to improve the strength and some stretching exercises also which improve the flexibility of the muscles. So there are in the anterior side in the chest, there are especially three types of muscles are there. The muscles include the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor and subclavius. There is another muscle which is we can consider the, another muscle called the serratus anterior we can consider as a chest muscle because some part of the, the muscle is seen on the anterior side of this. So the first muscle is the pectoralis major. Pectoralis major, major is the major muscle, an important muscle in the anterior side of the chest or anterior chest. And its origin is from anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle. Half of the breadth of the anterior surface of the manubrium and sternum up to the 6th costal cartilage level. Again, 2nd to 6th costal cartilage, then upper neurosis of the external oblique muscles of abdomen. These are the origin. So, it's having four origin. The first one is anterior surface of the medial half of the clavicle, then sternum and manubrium sternum of its half breadth. Then, 2nd to 6th costal cartilage and upper neurosis of the external oblique muscle. From this, it goes laterally, it moves laterally and attached. Next. From these four origins, it moves laterally and attached to the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. The nerve supply is from the medial and lateral pectoral nerve. So it's, ha it's having especially three types of action. The muscle together it makes adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder. The first one is adduction and it is the muscle which causes the medial rotation of the shoulder. Its clavicular part, the clavicular part makes the flexion of the arm. And extension of the flux of the arm against the resistance is done by the sternocostal part of the muscle. Now it's having three types of action. The first one is adduction and medial rotation of the shoulder. Then flexion, the clavicular part made the flexion of the arm. And extension of the flux arm against the resistance is done by the sternocostal part. So these are the action of the these are the these are the three types, three different types of action of the pectoralis major muscle. Next. Next muscle is the pectoralis minor muscle. So its origin is from the 3rd, 4th and 5th rib near its costochondral junction. And the second origin is from the intervening fascia covering the external intercostal muscles. And it is inserted on the medial border and the upper surface of the coracoid process. Next. And its nerve supply is medial and lateral pectoral nerve. Now its action is mainly on the scapula. It draws the scapula forward. It depresses the point of shoulder and it's a muscle which helps in inspiration. <coughs> Especially it helps in forced inspiration. Next. Next muscle is the subclavius muscle. It's a very small muscle. It starts from the first ring at the costochondral junction and it's inserted into the subclavian groove. In the middle one third of the clavicle there is a subclavian groove and it's inserted into that subclavian groove. Nerve supply is nerve to subclav subclavius. The name of the nerve is nerve to subclavius. Its origin it, it is originating from the brachial plexus. The main function of the subclavius is 
position the clavicle during different movements of the shoulder. We'll repeat it. The subclavius, it's one of the small muscles in, uh, in the chest region. Its origin is from the first rib at the costochondral junction and it is inserted into the subclavia, subclavial groove in the middle one third of the clavicle. Nerve supply is from the nerve to subclav subclavius, that is a part of the brachial plexus. Now its action is positioning the clavicle or steadies the clavicle during different movements of the shoulder. Next muscle is called serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is also called the boxer's muscle or big swing muscle because it is largely responsible for the protraction of the scapula. So it is important for the especially in the boxers. That is pulling the scapula forward around the rib cage that occurs when some, uh, someone throws a punch. So it is the serratus anterior is also called boxer's muscle. Its origin is from the fleshy slits, from the outer surface of the upper, upper eight or nine ribs. And it is inserted into the costal aspect of the median margin of the scapula. Nerve supply, the name of the nerve is the long thoracic nerve. So it is actually from the, it is actually from the brachial plexus, that is C5, C6 and C7 is the root value. Action is protraction and stabilization of the scapula and assist the scapula in forward rotation. So, serratus anterior, it's also called the boxer's muscle, and its action is protraction and stabilization of the scapula and assist in upward rotation, originating from the fleshy rib slips on the outer surface of the upper, upper nine, eight or nine ribs, and it is inserted into the Costal aspect of the medial margin of the scapula. The nerve supply is long thoracic nerve. Now we will go through the different exercises which improve the which improve the strength and stretching of the strength and flexibility of the chest muscles. So we'll go through in this first session. We'll go through the different stretching exercises that which improve the flexibility of the chest muscle. The stretching, the improving the flexibility, uh, flexibility, uh, flexibility of the shoulder, sh sh this chest muscles are important, especially those who are playing, those, the, those who are using the upper limb for the different activity, like throwers, the cricketers, etc. In this session, we will be discussing about the different stretching exercises for the pectoral muscles, especially the chest muscles. The exercise we are going to perform right now is the behind head chest stretch. Subject places his hand behind the head. Now, subject pulls the elbow back further behind the ear. He will be getting stretching on uh, the chest region, especially pectoral region. Hold the stretch for some time, then relax, then repeat. Here the target muscle is the pectoralis major, especially the sternum. In this exercise, the target in this exercise, the target muscle is the pectoralis major, especially the sternal part, sternal origin of the pectoralis major muscle. But along with the pectoralis major muscle, the pectoralis minor muscle also getting stretched in this. The exercise is called behind head chest stretch muscle, chest stretch exercise. So the target muscle is pectoralis major. The accessory muscle or the other muscle uh, getting stretched is the pectoralis minor muscle. Next exercise we are going to perform is the double shoulder girdle stretch. For this exercise, the subject should grasp a large double or rope with very wide overhand grip, approximately the length of the arm to the opposite elbow. Now raise the towel overhead, raise the towel overhead and pull the towel back away from the back of the head while attempting to, the, to pull the towel outward on each side. So he'll be getting stretching on the stretch on these pectoral muscles along with the the axis we performed right now is double shoulder girdle stretch. Here the target muscle is pectoralis minor. The minor the pectoralis minor muscle is getting stretched. 
But along with the pectoralis minor, there are three four muscles also getting stretched. The muscles include sternal part of the pectoralis major and clavicular part of the pectoralis major, subscapularis. These are the three muscles, other three muscles which is getting stretched along with the pectoralis minor muscle for double shoulder stretch. The exercise we performed in the last session was certain stretching exercises. The stretching exercise especially to the chest muscles, pectoralis, pectoralis minor and subclavius muscle. And now we will be going through some strengthening exercises which improve the strength of the chest muscles. So, the, 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 the first one is the barbell bench press. For barbell bench press, the subject should be lying supine over on the bench. Dispound the barbell from the rack over the upper chest using wide oblique overhanging. Should be wide, more wide. No, then lower the weight to the mid chest, press the bar upward until the arms extended. Then repeat the exercise for four or five seconds. Next exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell bench press. Here in dumbbell bench press, the target muscle we are going, uh, the target muscle is the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. The subject should be sitting down on bench with the dumbbells resting on the lower thigh. Kick the weight to the shoulder and lie back. Position the dumbbell to sides of the chest with arms, with bent arms under each dumbbell. Press the dumbbell up with the elbows to the sides until the arms are extended. Lower weight to the sides of the upper chest until slight stretch is felt in the chest or shoulder. Repeat. The target muscle for this ex in this exercise is the pectoralis sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. But along with the pectoralis major muscle, the other muscles of the chest region also getting involved in this action. Next exercise we are going to perform here is the dumbbell fly. The exercise we are going to perform right now is the dumbbell fly. The subject should be lying down face up on a bench or, and hold the dumbbell in each hand. The knees will be bent to 90 degree and the feet and feet shoulder width apart pointing the straight head. Knees bent at 90 degree and the feet, feet on the shoulder width apart pointing straight head. Straight head. Draw your belly button in and hold the dumbbell to the sides with arms slightly bent and just until you feel a slight stretch on the chest. Bring the dumbbell together. Bring the dumbbell together in a hugging motion until they tense. Then lower it slowly, lower it slowly and repeat. Here the target muscle is the again the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. This is called dumbbell fly. So along with the uh, pectoralis major muscle, the other muscles of the chest also uh, getting strengthened by dumbbell fly. Next exercise we are going to perform is the push. The subject for the push-up subject should prone on the floor with hands slightly wider than the shoulder widths. Raise the body up of the floor by extending the arm with the body straight. Keeping the body straight, lower the body to floor by bending the arms, push the body up until the arms are extended. This is called push-up and repeat the movement. The target muscle here is the pectoralis major muscle, especially the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. There are some muscles also which work as synergetics. Syner synergetic action of muscle is there. The muscle includes clavicular, clavicular part of the pectoralis major, anterior deltoid, and triceps, brachii. These are the muscles which work as 
synergetist or syner synergist for the muscle action, for the action of the cushion. We are right now we are performing is the weighted cushion. That is the subject should lie prone on the floor with the hands wider than of the shoulder weight. Raise the body up on the floor by extending the arms with the body stretch. And the physio or the trainer can place the weight over the back. Keeping the body stretch, lower the body to the floor by bending the arms. Push the body up until the arms are extended. And do the repeat the same procedure two three times. That here that again the target muscle is the sternal part of the pectoralis major, but there are some other muscles which is having the synergetic action. The muscles include the clavicular part of the pectoralis major, anterior deltoid, and tricep brachii. These are the muscles which act along with the pectoralis major muscle in the weighted pusher. Exercise. Next exercise we are going to perform is the incline push-up. So subject should be for incline push-up. Subject should be standing, facing the bench or an elevated platform. Place the hand on the edge of the bench or platform, slightly wider than the shoulder width position. Fall forward back on the bench or platform with the arms and body straight. Arms and body should be straight. And its arms should be per exactly perpendicular to the body. Keeping the body straight, lower the chest towards the uh, towards the platform by bending the arms or by bending the elbow. Start. Push the body up until the arms are extended. So keeping the body straight, lower the chest towards the towards the platform. By bending the elbow or bending the arms, push the body up with keeping the elbow straight. That here the target muscle is the pectoralis major muscle, especially the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. The synergetic action is from the clavicular part of the pectoralis major, anterior deltoid, and triceps brachii. Next exercise we are going to perform here is the push up on knees. The exercise we are going, we are performing here is the push up on knees. The subject should be lying prone with the hands slightly better than the shoulder width. We are bending the knees and raise the body up on the floor by extending the arm with the body stretch. Keeping the body straight and knees bent, lower the body to the floor by bending the elbow or bending the arms. Then push the body up until the arms, until the elbow is extended. Repeat. Here the target muscle again is the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. There is synergetic action of the clavicular major. Uh, there is synergetic action of the clavicular part of the pectoralis major. And medial deltoid and triceps brachii. The exercise we are going to perform now is the decline push. -up. The exercise we are performing is the decline push. -up. The subject should be kneel on the floor with with the bench or elevation behind the body. Position the hand on the floor slightly wider than the shoulder width. Place the feet on the bench or elevation. Straight the body. Position with the body straight and the arms are extended. Then keeping the body straight, lower the body to the floor by, ending, by, by bending the arms. Keeping the body straight, lower the upper body to uh, upper body to the floor by bending the elbow. To allow for a full descent, pull the head back slightly without arching the back. Push the body up until the arms are extended. Then here the target muscle is the clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle and the synergetic action of the pectoralis sternal part of the pectoralis major is the anterior deltoid and triceps brachii. Next exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell pullover. 
Let's say we are going to go, we are performing we are uh, perform, we are going to perform now is the dumbbell pull over. The subject should lie upper back perpendicular on the bench. Grasp one dumbbell from behind or from sides with both hands. Position over the chest. Position the dumbbell over the chest. Keep the elbows bent slightly throughout the axis. Now lower the dumbbell over and beyond the head until the upper arms are parallel to the body. Start. Then return to its starting position that is over the chest and repeat. This exercise is called dumbbell pullover exercise. Return to the original posture and repeat the exercise. Okay. So next exercise for the improvement of tricep strength is the close grip push up on knees. For this, the subject should be positioned on prone line position. You should lie prone on the floor with hands under the shoulders or slightly narrower. Position the body up off floor with the extended arm and body straight. Hip, hip, hip should be straight but the knees should be bent. Keeping the body straight, lower the body to floor by bending arms. Lower the body to floor by end bending arms and push the body up until arms are extended. So this is the exercise, this is the, the, this is the exercise called cross grip push up on knees. This will improve the tricep strength and the person can repeat, subject can repeat for 3 or 4 steps. Repeat. While doing, while performing the exercise, we have to make sure that his uh, hip is straight and knees are bent. Next exercise we are going to perform to, for the improvement of the tricep muscle strength is the dumbbell kickback. For dumbbell kickback, the subject should kneel over the bench with arm supporting the body. Grasp the dumbbell, position the upper arm parallel to the floor. The subject should be in kneeling position. You should kneel over the bench with arms supporting the body. Grasp the dumbbell, position the upper arm parallel to the floor. Start. Extend arm until it is straight. Return to the starting position and repeat the same exercise 3 or 4 sets. Continue then, you can continue with the opposite arm. So, this is the exercise called a dumbbell kickback. The, uh, strengthen, if you strengthen the triceps muscle. Next exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell lying triceps extension. The subject should be lying on the bench and the position the dumbbell over the head with arms extended, with shoulder and uh, with the arms extended and the lower the dumbbell and the subject should lower the dumbbell by bending elbow until they are sides of the head. Then extend the arm and repeat the axis. So there is the movement occurring is flexion along with the extension, and is there is resistant extension of the triceps muscle. This causes this uh, this this the axis to, which is performed for the strengthening of the triceps muscle. Next exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell one arm triceps extension. The subject should be sitting on a seat with back support just below the shoulder height. Then position the dumbbell over the head with arm straight up or up, arm straighter or slightly back. Lower the dumbbell behind the neck or shoulder while maintaining the upper arms vertical throughout the axis. Extend the arm until straight. Return to the starting position and repeat. Continue, then continue with the opposite arm. The next exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell triceps extension. The subject should be in standing position. Position the dumbbell overhead with both hands under the inner plates. Position one dumbbell overhead with both hands under the inner plates. With elbows overhead, lower the forearm behind the upper arm by flexing the elbow. 
Flex the wrist at the bottom to avoid hitting the dumbbell on the back of the neck. Raise the dumbbell overhead by extending the elbow, elbow while hyperextending the wrist. Return and repeat. Next exercise we are going to perform is the barbell close grip bench press. For this purpose, the subject should lie on the bench and grab the barbell from back with the shoulder width grip. Lower the weight to chest with elbows close to the body. Now push the barbell back until the arms are straight. Repeat. Even the grips can be slightly narrower than the shoulder width, but not too close. So the main muscle acting here is the triceps. Along with the triceps, there are synergetic action of the pectoral muscles also. Still say, still there. So this exercise is called a barbell close grip bench press. Next exercise we are going to perform is barbell lying triceps extension. The subject should be lying on the bench with narrow overhand grip on the barbell. Position the barbell over the forehead with arms extended. Lower the, lower the bar by bending the elbows. Lower the bar by bending the elbows. As the bar is near to the head, move the elbows straight back until enough to allow the bar to clear around the curvature of the head. Extend the arm. As the bar clears the head, reposition the elbow to, uh, to their former position, former position until the arms are fully extended. Then repeat. The next one is barbell tricep extension. Subject should be in sitting position. It should position the barbell overhead with narrow overhand grip. Now lower the, board, lower the forearm behind the upper arm with the elbows remaining overhead. Lower the forearm behind the upper arm with the elbows remaining overhead. Now extend the forearm overhead. Lower and repeat. The strengthening exercise for the triceps muscle. Now we will go through some exercises for the stretching of the triceps. So that it will, uh, it will decrease the chance of injury to the triceps while doing different uh, games. So next is the first exercise we are going to perform is the overhead triceps stretch. You should put one arm overhead, position the forearm as close as possible to the upper arm, grab the elbow overhead with other hand. Now pull the elbow back and towards head. Hold the stretch for some time. Then relax, repeat with the opposite arm. The exercise we are performing here is the BNF or head triceps stretch. We are instructing the participant to stand or sit on the floor, chair or bench, and place the arm overhead. Standing behind the participant, grab their wrist and position their forearm against the upper arm. Hold the participant's elbow behind their head while keeping the forearm against the upper arm. Hold the stretch. Repeat it with the opposite arm. The next exercise we are going to perform is the towel tricep stretch. Now grasp the towel or rope, position the towel behind the head so towel dangles down behind the body. 
reach behind back or waist with the opposite hand and grab the opposite end with the towel. Position the upper arm close to back side of the head. Pull the towel downward with lower arm. Hold stretch. Repeat with the opposite arm. we are going to perform is the uh, dumbbell incline curl. The subject should be for dumbbell incline curl, the subject should be sitting on his back with 40 to 60 degree incline bench. With the arms hanging down on straight, position two dumbbells with the palms facing inward. With the elbows back to sides, raise one dumbbell and rotate the forearm until the forearm is vertical and palm faces the shoulder. Lower it slowly to the original position and repeat with the opposite arm. Continue to alternate between sides. So the exercise is known as dumbbell incline curl. So here the target muscle is the biceps brachii. The exercise we are going to perform is a stretching exercise. It's uh, it is up the straight arm chest stretch. It is for the stretching, especially the target muscle here. In the stretching is the pectoralis major muscle, but depends upon, depends upon the position of the arm, position of the upper limb. The stretching varies. The stretching exercise we are performing is the straight arm chest stretch with the arms extended. That is elbow, especially the elbow extended. Position the hand on a fixed structure at the shoulder height. So the, with the elbow extended, the arm, sh the hand should be positioned on a fixed structure. The height should be at the shoulder height. Then we are asking the person to turn the body away from the position arm. So he will be getting a stretch at his pectoralis, re pectoral region, chest region. Hold the stretch for some time, then relax and repeat with the opposite arm. So this exercise is called straight arm chest rise. The exercise we performed, the stretching exercise we performed right now is the chest arm chest stretch. Straight arm chest stretch. Here in this case, the elbow is straight and the shoulder is at the, uh, and the hand is at the upper limb at the shoulder level. Now, if we are keeping the, the upper limb above the shoulder level. Then the lower chest, the lower chest, for example, if the elbow is at the higher level of the shoulder, the lower chest muscle, as including the pectoralis minor muscle, will get stretching. But and if we are keeping the elbow below the shoulder level, the upper chest muscle will get stretched. So, in this exercise, the target muscle was the pectoralis major muscle. Next stretch we are going to perform is for the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle. The name of the stretching technique is the doorway chest stretch. So, along with in this stretch, along with the sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle, the clavicular part of the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor also will get stretched. Next exercise we are going to perform is the doorway chest stretch. The subject should be standing at the end of a wall or a doorway. Facing the perpendicular to wall. Place, the, place inside of the bent arm on the surface of a wall. Position, position bent elbow at the shoulder height. The height of the elbow, bent elbow should be at the shoulder height. Turn the body away from the position arm and hold the stretch. The subject will be getting stretching over his the chest muscles. Repeat with the opposite arm. If for example, if in this case, in doorway stretch also, like this, the other stretch, in doorway stretch also, the position of the upper chest, the position of the uh, elbow should be at the same level of the shoulder. Now for example, if we are keeping the elbow down, or lower, the lower part of the chest, including the pectoralis minor muscle, will get stretched. In this type of stretching, 
the shoulder level and the, sh the elbow should be at the shoulder level but if we are keeping the elbow lower that is lower than the shoulder level the upper side upper chest become get stretched or the upper chest become more stretched with the elbow lower if the if you are keeping the elbow upper that is upper to the shoulder level the lower chest and pectoralis minor become more stretched so the here the target muscle is the pectoralis sternal part of the pectoralis major muscle some more muscles that is called, including the pectoralis clavicular part of the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor muscle also getting stretched in this type of technique so this is called dorsal chest stretch now the next the exercise is lying shoulder girdle stretch the person should be the subject should be lying supine with the soles of the feet on the floor hip and knees are bent bend the elbow and position the back back of the arm against the floor with the elbows to the sides push the shoulder forearm and back of the hand into the floor and slowly move the arm towards the head of towards the sides of the head still the pushing of the shoulder and back of the arms into the floor slowly arm towards the sides here the target muscle for this lying shoulder girdle stretch is the pectoralis minor muscle there are some other muscles also getting stretched these are the sternal part of the pectoralis major clavicular part of the pectoralis major and subscapularis muscle so these four muscles getting stretched in this lying shoulder girdle stretch next exercise we are going to perform here is the barbell decline bench press the subject should be lying supine on a decline bench with feet under the leg press Dismount the barbell from the rack over the chest using wide oblique overhand grip. Lower the weight to the upper chest. Press the bar until arms are extended. Repeat the exercise. The exercise we are going to perform is the dumbbell decline bench press. The subjects will be sitting on the decline bench with the feet under the leg brace and the dumbbell resting on the thighs. Then we are asking the subject to lie back with the dumbbells. Position the dumbbells to the sides of the chest with the bent arms or bent elbow under each dumbbell. The press the dumbbell up with the elbow to the sides until the arms are extended. Lower the weight to the sides of the chest until slight stretch is felt on the chest or shoulder. Repeat the exercise two three times two three times. The next exercise we are going to perform is the weight, uh, weighted chest dip. Weighted chest dip. Place the weight on dip belt around the waist, or place the dumb. Place the weight on dip belt around the waist, or place the dumbbell between the lower legs, just above the feet. Mount the wide dip bar with the oblique grip. Arms straighten with the shoulders above the hand. The elbow should be straightened with the shoulders above the hand. Keep the hips and bent. Uh, keep the knees. Uh, keep the hip and knees bent. Now lowering the body, we are asking the subject to lower the body by bending the arms, by bending the elbows, allowing the elbows to flare outside. When the when slight stretch is felt in the chest or shoulder, push the body up until the arms are straight. Then repeat the same exercise three four times. This is called weight, uh, weighted chest dip. Topic is general anatomy, terminology, and positions. I am Rashidul Islam Ansari, CC Maligar. Review of structures organization. As you know very well, atoms, molecules, cells, tissues, organs, system, organism. These are the different units 
which covers a human body. Body systems are ten. Skeletal system. This is contains bones. Circulatory system, which reveals that blood circulation. Digestive system. From tongue to rectum. Respiratory system from nose to lungs, urinary system. This is the defecation. Urinary system, reproductive system, nervous system, muscular system based upon human muscles, endocrine system, and autogametry system. Basically, here I want to discuss skeletal system. Much general diagnostic radiography involves examination of bones and joints, osteology and orthology. 200 separate bones are present in human body, divided into axial and appendicular bones. These 206 bones are in two groups. Number one is skeletal. Skeleton, axial skeleton contains 80 bones. Cranium, cranium means a head in which eight cranial bones are attached. Facial bones are 14. One hide bone. Auditory ossicles are six. Cervical vertebrae are seven. And thoracic vertebrae, 12. Lumbar vertebrae, five. Sacrum one, coccyx one, sternum. This is the main sternum, coccyx one, sternum, sternum one, and twenty-four uh, ribs are contains the human body chest. Total eighty bones in axial skeletal are shown here. A pendicular skeletal system contains hundred. Twenty-six bones, two clavicles, two scapula, two hemorrhoi, one and two ulnar bones, and two radius bones. Carpals sixteen, metacarpals ten, phalanges twenty-eight, hip bones two, femora two. This makes th thigh. patella which contains situated at the knee joint in both legs is patella 2 tarsal bone 15 metatarsal 10 bones phalanges 28 sisamoid bones Special oval shaped bones found in tendons, mostly near joints, <coughs> not present in developing fetus. The only systemites that are included in the total body bone count are the patellae, common found on the palmar surface of the hand, and sometimes in the tendons of the uh, of upper of lower limb joints. Any systemite can fractured. And may need to be demonstrated radiographically. Radiography helps in the diagnosis of the fracture. Bones classification: four types of bones are here. These are long bones, which makes forearm, upper arm, and leg legs. Flat bones, which contains chest, sternum, short bones. and some irregular bones just hip bones or pelvic bones and pv symphysis this is the classification of bones shape long bones body two ends and extremities composed of compact bones or cortex body spongy bones red marrow medullary cavity periosteum hyaline cartilage articular cartilage and periosteum car short bones are carpals and tarsals flat bones consist of two plates of compact bone with 
cancellous bones and marrow between them. Example, clavarium, sternum, ribs, and scapula. Deploy space between the inner and outer table of the flat bones in the cranium. This is the cranium. Irregular bones, bones with peculiar shapes, vertebrae, facial bones. These are the facial bones of the cranium base and bones of the pelvis. These all are irregular bones. Blood cells production. RBC red blood cells are produced in the red bone marrow of the certain flats and irregular, irregular bones. As in sternum, RBC production in red marrow, bone development. In the intrauterine life, or ossification begins in the sixth embryonic week and contains until adulthood. Adulthood means just 25 years of the age and intrauterine life in the pregnancy, sixth week of pregnancy, bone ossification begins. Two kinds of bone formations, intramembranous occur rapidly in bones necessary for production sutures of these skulls. Endochondral much slower than intramembranous occurs in the most part of the skeleton. Centers of endochondral ossification, primary centers, midbody or diaphysis, secondary centers, ends or extremities of the long bones or epiphysis. Epiphyseal plates found between the diaphysis and epiphysis until the skeletal growth is complete. Growth of the skeleton is complete at the age of 25 years. And uh, is, this is starts in intrauterine life just 15th week of fifth week of pregnancy. Orthology is study of joints. Functional classification, synarthrosis, immovable joints, amphiarthrosis, limited movements of the joints, Diarthrosis, freely movable joints. Structural classification. Number one, fibrous, held together by fibrous connective tissue. Syndesmosis, only one in the body. Distal tubular fibular joint. Amphiarthrodial sutures between the bones of the skulls. Synarthrodial. Gomphosis, roots of the teeth, very limited movements. Number two, cartilaginous, held tightly together by cartilage. Symphysis, example in intervertebral disc, amphiarthrodial, synchondrosis, these are temporary growth joints. Example in the acetabulum, they are synarthrodial. Number three, synovial. Fibrous capsule contains synovial fluid. They are diarthrial, and some example are the knee and elbow joint. Movements type of synovial joints. Number one, plane or gliding. Number two, gingivalous or hinge. Number three, trochoid or pivot. Number four, ellipsoid or condyloid, cellar or saddle. Number six, sphenoid or ball or end socket joints. Anatomical positions, upright arms abducted, palms forwarded, and feet directed straight ahead, weaving radiographic, display x-ray so that the patient is facing weave in anatomic position. This is the anatomical position, face is straight, palms anterior sides, Toes right side, face and in front. Body planes, section and lines. Sagittal plane, any longitudinal plane dividing the body into the right and left. Any longitudinal plane dividing into the body left and right side. Mid sagittal plane means one median plane divided the body into the 
equal both right and left sides coronal plane longitudinal plane divided the body into the anterior and posterior anterior part this is the posterior part anterior and posterior parts section is the coronal section mid coronal section is divided the body into the equal anterior and posterior parts this is mid coronal just means just mid points in the body one anterior and the other part is posterior part horizontal or axial plane transverse plane at passing through the body at right angles at the longitudinal plane divided into superior and inferior position superior position and this is the inferior position just 90 degree in the body horizontal or axial plane oblique plane longitudinal or transverse uh, that is on an angle or slant to the sagittal coronal or horizontal planes understanding ct and mri images longitudinal section can be taken in sagittal coronal or oblique planes transverse axial or cross section planes of skull base plane occipital plane body surfaces and parts posterior or dorsal part this is the posterior part this makes back and anterior part makes chest or uh, this on um, this can be called ventral side plantar sole of foot dorsal top of anterior surface of foot back or posterior aspect of the hand palmar palmar means palm of the hand or anterior or ventral surface this is the palmar side and this is the dorsal side plantar side is sole of the foot anterior this is the anterior or ventral side and this the back side is the posterior or dorsal side radiographic projections posterior anterior pav means first posterior and after anterior position next anterior posterior first anterior or ventral position and next posterior position pa oblique means posterior anterior and oblique side medial lateral or lateral medial median side this is known as median side and lateral side the lateral one one side body positions and special projections supine position prone position erect position recumbent trendenberg flowers sims position lithotomy position decubitus axial infra superior or superior inferior tan genital ap axial or lordopti trans thoracic dorso plantar or planto dorsal parieto asanthial or exanthio parietal sub mento vertex or vertigo sub mental relationship terms medial versus lateral position proximal versus distal position cephalid versus corded in, in interior versus exterior superficial view versus deep ipsilateral versus contralateral lordosis versus kyphosis lordosis just imagine just we can this is position is lordosis and opposite position is kyphosis scoliosis means vertebral column tilted to one side flexion and extension ulnar deviation and radiation deviation ulnar deviation means ulna ulnar bone deviated into another side and radius deviation is 
आउटर साइड अवर्जन और इन्वर्जन वलगस वर्सेस वेरस मेडियल रोटेशन वर्सेस लेटरल रोटेशन दिस इज द मीडियल रोटेशन एंड व्हेन वी मूव आवर हैंड टू लेटरल साइड दिस इज द लेटरल पोजीशन एबडक्शन दिस इज द एबडक्शन पोजीशन एंड एडक्शन दिस इज द एडक्शन पोजीशन प्रोट्रेशन एंड रिटेक्शन प्रोट्रेशन एंड रिटेक्शन पोजिशन एलिवेशन मीन्स टू एलिवेट समथिंग एंड डिप्रेशन पोजिशन कंप्रेस और डिप्रेस सरकमडक्शन मीन्स सरकमडक्शन अराउंड दी वन सरफेस रोटेशन और टिल्ट रोटेशन एट मूमेंट एट वन पॉइंट टिल्ट मूमेंट जस्ट लाइट मूमेंट विद इन पोजिशन classification of position terms position use this when indicating the patient's general phys physical position such as supine prone etc it is also used to describe the specific body positions such as obliques and laterals restricted the use of this word of the patient's physical position projection describe the path or direction of the central ray restricted the use of this word to the cr we not to correct position terms in the us restricted the us of the word we to describing the image from the vintage of the image receptor <coughs> radiographic criteria the goal of every technology should be not just the possible radiograph but rather an optimal one that can be evaluated by a definable standard as described under the radiographic criteria the structures shown first preference is to show some structure and some posi position collimation and cr exposure criteria image markers principle of determining position routines a minimum of two projections 90 degree from each other is required to most procedures why because certain conditions may not be visualized on one projection only sometimes foreign bodies are embedded and two projections are needed to determine the exact location all fractures required two projections at 90 degree angles to determine the alignment of the fracture parts a minimum of three projections when joints are in interest area why because more information is needed than can be provided by two projections c list in book procedure requires two procedures and which requires three topographic position landmarks vertebral prominences jugular notch sternal angles zified process in inferior costal margins iliac crest ss greater trocar symphysis pubis ischial tuberosity body hyper habits hypersthenic sthenic hypersthenic and sthenic four types of body habits hypersthenic hypersthenic sthenic hypersthenic and sthenic thanks